Starting your day off with a take on Vegas you won't get anywhere else. Hi, I'm Holly Madison, and I listen to Brian Shapiro. Hi, this is William Shatner, and I listen to Brian Shapiro. Hey, this is Larry the Cable Guy, and I listen to Brian Shapiro. Why? Because I'm a good American. So is he. And if you don't listen to him, you need to pack up and leave this country. This is the Vegas Take with Sharp and Shapiro. Welcome all again! What up, Vegas? It is Monday, and it is time for the Vegas Take. Sharp and Shapiro, so glad you could join us. Your buddy's back at you. I hope you had a great weekend. I know I certainly did. It was a fun weekend. A lot to get to. Went to the Pac-Man fight. Watched a little golf. Watched the British Open. Watch a little Fox News and CNN. Of course, I do that every day. But as I said, we got a lot to do today. It's Monday. Chris Wynn joining us in studio. Coming up in hour number two. If you're a UNLV basketball fan or just a, a, a basketball fan in Vegas in general, you certainly know who this guy is. Todd Simon. He's the former head coach of Finley Prep. A former interim head coach at UNLV, and he's doing a great job at Southern Utah. He's going to be joining us in studio coming up in hour number two. I believe he's in town doing some recruiting. And then... Gloria Allred will be joining us. Attorney Gloria Allred. Why? Well, she represents the woman in the case against the boxer uh, who, I guess there's a video There's a video of it that I've seen where uh, uh, allegedly, well, I sh- why would I even say allegedly? There's, oh, there's a, video. a video. Yeah, there's a video yeah. and it happens. It's pretty clear cut. Yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty clear it cut. You're right. Place. Done and, done. Uh, anyway, done he, deal. He, he kisses this reporter and he loses his boxing license. Well, the uh, California Boxing Commission had a meeting with him today, and we're going to get an update from Gloria Allred in regards to what exactly happened at that meeting, and will he be boxing again? And is is Bob Arum going to be sued for his comments? We're going to get to that and much, much more in hour number two with attorney Gloria Allred. However, gentlemen, did you happen to catch Fox News interview Stephen Miller? Wallace did an interview with Stephen Miller. Did you guys catch that interview? Did you see it? It was pretty brutal. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It was something that uh, I guess we should have expected it, given Stephen Miller's stance on issues of race slash immigration slash that's his wheelhouse. But it's still, it, it, it's always stunning when you get a chance to listen to him come out of the shadows of the White House and actually speak on camera. Well, somebody else who's not qualified. It's somebody else who should not be in any cabinet, let alone the president's cabinet. I uh, shouldn't even be in my cabinet with my peanut butter as far as I'm concerned. But, uh, J.D., did you catch it? I did not catch you it. You did no. not catch it. Okay, well, we'll play some clips for you and some of the listeners maybe who were unable to catch it. Let's start off with uh, Wallace's uh, one of Wallace's first questions. And he asked, why can't this squad, you know, criticize the U.S.? When Trump certainly can, because when Trump was campaigning, he said, well, I'm going to make America great again. He was criticizing you know, the policies of the United States. So uh, here's Wallace's question, and we'll go right to Stephen Miller's answer. There's a fundamental distinction between people who think that we need to lean into and strengthen America's core values, whether it be our constitutional values, the rule of law, the, the principles of Western civilization, or people who think that we basically need to turn America into Venezuela. So basically, he's dodging the question. Let's just call it for what it is. That's exactly what he's doing. He's dodging the question. Now, I don't agree with all the things that oh, – some of the things. I shouldn't say all the things. I don't agree with some of the things that Omar has said. I do believe there is some anti-Semitism in her. I, I, I don't think I, – I don't doubt that. But in regards to these other three women, I do believe they should have the right to criticize the United States when it comes to policy. But, Brian, full disclosure, that clip was – what uh, Miller was doing was describing – what uh, Donald Trump had done, right, leading up to the election and since he's been president when he talks about, you know, uh, when he's making negative comments about the United States of America. He was comparing Trump's comments to to lies that he was telling about Omar. Now, look, yes, there have been some statements that have been controversial with respect to Omar when it comes to anti-Semitism and it comes to Israel, okay? But he, what, what Stephen Miller was doing was lying about Omar but then trying to, but then using the lies about Omar to compare them to statements that Donald Trump has made going into the election of 16 and then after. And now he also continues with his answer, uh, more gibberish. Here, here's, here's the rest of his answer. These four congresswomen detest America as it exists, as it is 
currently constructed. They want to tear down the structure of our country. They want it to be a socialist, open borders country. If you attack border agents the way that Ocasio-Cortez has, it means you have a deep-seated hatred of the nation as it exists. Now, first of all, let me say this. Not one of these four women have ever said that they want completely open borders. He's also making a assumption by saying that he made, he made his own formula. If you attack these things, that means right. that you he's mm-hmm. basically putting words in their mouth. Exactly. Well, that not that what Donald Trump does? I mean, he does that a lot. Well, this guy, Stephen Miller, certainly does that here. Yeah. Well, Stephen Miller's just parroting what Donald Trump said this week, guys. In the past seven days, he's been talking about how all these women hate America. It's ridiculous. Okay? Which is a lie out there, people, okay? Listeners, Trump supporters out there, it is a lie. These four women do not hate America. No. So the question that, and by the way, I respect this guy Wallace at Fox News a lot. I say it all the time. I think he gives it both ways, and he does a very fair and honest interview, and he asks the tough questions. I do like him a lot. I'm becoming a fan because he does this with everybody, and I think he's fair. So he asked Miller the next question is, is Donald Trump stirring race relations? Now, certainly my answer, of course he is. Of course he is. But here is the ridiculous answer that we get from Stephen Miller. Saying that America needs to improve to get closer to an America first ideal, as the president did as a candidate, criticizing Obama, criticizing our trade deals, our foreign policy deals, our immigration policies, is out of love for America. Saying, as Representative Ocasio-Cortez did, that illegal immigrants are, in effect, more American than Americans is fundamentally an okay, anti-American let's, let's, statement. First of all, nobody ever said that. I don't know where he's getting this from. Nobody said that illegals in America are more important than Americans. Yeah. Nobody said that. So again, he's just ma- pulling stuff out of his ass. They're for lack lies, of a Brian. Term. It's he ridiculous. He's telling things that are not true. Yeah, uh, it's, it's insane. So Wallace goes on and asks, why shouldn't someone see Trump's comments as racist? Which I think is a very fair question. And here's Miller's response to that. I think the term racist, Chris, has become a label that is too often deployed by the left Democrats in this country simply to try to silence and punish and suppress people they disagree with, speech that they don't want to hear. The reality is that this president has been a president for all Americans, whether you look at historically low black unemployment rates, historically low Hispanic unemployment rates, or if you look at what he's doing on immigration. First of all, again, completely and utterly ridiculous. Just because black unemployment is down doesn't mean that it gives him the right to tell somebody to go back to their country, Uh, especially when they were born in New York. (laughs) Ocasio-Cortez was born in New York. She's American. And he and he tells these some of these women to go back to their country. I'm laughing because it's so ridiculous that at this point, uh, almost a week after these comments were made, there are still idiots out there. That's right. I'm calling you idiots that are defending these comments of go back home, go back to your country. You cannot even if you don't think it's racist. OK, let me let me just end this right here. OK, let me end this right here. If we were talking about a white woman or a white man that was born in the United States of America, 100 percent white. Do you think we would have heard that chant about that person? Send her back. The answer is no. If this was a white woman or a white man that the president was talking about, do you think the president would have said, you know, go back to your country? The answer is no. We are talking about race. We are talking about the color of one's skin. We are talking about maybe where they are from, in this case, Omar. Regardless of whether you dislike Omar, regardless of whether you think she's an anti-Semite, and I do believe she is. I wish she would leave office, but I'm not going to tell her to leave the country, okay? This is about race, and if you don't think this is about race, then you are complicit. It is 100%. There is no doubt about it. And Stephen Miller says this, right, Brian? He says, speech that you don't want to hear. No, Stephen, it's not speech that we don't want to hear. It's things that you shouldn't say, okay? We don't want to hear you say racist things. We don't want the president to say racist things. And for the past eight days, by the way, you guys, the whole discourse in the country, and even on your show, there's been this debate, right? Is it racist? Is it not? Is it racially charged? Is it motivated by racist opinions? Let me tell you something, okay? And I'll I'll sum this up in one sentence, okay, and clear this up. Yes, it is racist, and I'm going to tell you why. Nobody that is not a bigot, nobody that is not a racist has ever said, go back to where you came from. Exactly. Go back to where you're from. I agree. No one has ever said that. 
Bottom line, period, full stop. And it by was the racist. way, and I'll give up the I'll give out the phone line if you want to be a part of the show. The number to call is 702-257-5396. Again, that number to call if you want to be a part of the program. 257-5396. This is where it gets dangerous, folks. There are crazy people out there. A Louisiana police officer said on Facebook that Alexander Ocasio-Cortez is a vile idiot, but it gets worse. Hold on. This vile idiot needs a round, this officer said. This officer goes on to say, and I don't mean the kind she used to serve. So a police officer is making a reference to the fact that Ocasio-Cortez deserves a round of ammunition in her, okay? This is beyond disgusting. The head of the police department said, I will tell you this. This will not go unchecked. I'm not going to take this lightly, and this will be dealt with on our end. It's not something we want someone that's affiliated with our department to make these types of statements. That's not going to happen. Now, that's the obvious statement. But there are crazy people out there, and don't you even begin to tell me that this has nothing to do with Donald Trump. This has a lot to do with Donald Trump. Now, Donald Trump might not directly be saying, hey, Ocasio-Cortez de- deserves a round of ammunition. Go out and kill her. No, the Trump, Trump has not said that. But when you put up this anger and tell somebody to go back to their country when they are 100 percent American and they were born in the United States of America and they are American citizens, don't we understand how dangerous that is? Let me give out the number one more time. The number 702-257-5396 if you want to be a part of the show. Again, that number 257-5396. Let's start off this segment with Brady. Brady, what's going on? Yeah, right on, Brian. I think uh, Donald Trump should have, instead of saying go back to your country, he should have just maybe said, uh, if you don't like America, you don't like the Constitution, you don't like the president, you don't like capitalism, you want open borders. If not, go back to your go back to wherever you want, but just leave. How is that? That would have been a lot better. OK, but can uh, I, yeah, you're making can I ask you a right? question. Can I ask you a question, though, Brady? Um, where did they say they want open borders? I'm really confused. What uh, out of the squad, which one said I am for open borders? Every one of them, just like they raised Show me their a quote. on the stage when they asked the politicians. Give me an exact I, quote if you're going to make a statement that I believe to be untrue. Please give me a quote where they said they are all for open borders so any illegal could come into this country illegally. Because if you're going to make a statement like that, which, by the way, is not true, Brady, you're making the same gross assumptions that our president makes. When the president said that Omar talked about uh, Jewish people and, and it's the, you know, he, he brought up statements the other day that were said that Jews were vile and, and those other things. She never made those statements. When Ocasio, when he, when he talked about Ocasio-Cortez and he said Ocasio-Cortez, you know, hates America, wants open borders. She never said she wanted open borders. The president is lying, Brady, and with all due respect, you are the sucker because you believe him. Uh, the funny thing is, uh, AOC, you're, you're lovely, uh, the queen of the Democrat Party now. She's not the queen. About- She's a first-year she congresswoman. They are four, four freshman congresswomen, okay? They are not the face of the Democratic Party. They are part of the Democratic oh, Party. Yes, they are. Oh, they are. Okay, yeah. Well, it makes a lot of sense. Four, okay. four freshman congresswomen have been there for Brady, a matter listen, of months. It's not yeah, my it fault. Sense. It's not my fault that you have a picture of Ocasio Cortez on your wall on your wall that you pleasure yourself to every night. That's not my fault. Oh God, I you're throw obsessed. Up to that. Well, you're obsessed with her. You're obsessed with her, Brady. You guys always want to bring up Ocasio Cortez twenty four seven. Fox News does it twenty four seven. Why are you so threatened by a woman woman of power? Why do, uh, do you have women in your life that you're threatened by? Like, why why are you so threatened by Ocasio Cortez that you want to bring her up every three seconds? What is your obsession with her? I really want to know, Brady. I'm your therapist. I'm trying to okay, help hang, you. Hang on. Well, give me a second to answer your question. For the last week and a half, we've been talking about. Something that Donald Trump said, which is a minor point. These uh, four women incorrect. That are on the uh, incorrect. The, the president of the United talking. States said something racist on Twitter, and then his his supporters at a rally chanted something that was racist. And it, it's been a watershed moment. It's been a moment that has been highlighted in his presidency as being absolutely horrendous. It's not minor. Brady, okay? here's what I think oh, you should. How about, how about when uh, Rashida Tlaib when she took. Her, uh, what about is What about is Are you gonna Are you gonna hit me with oh, some oh, what about is now? Said, what about is oh, She said we have to impeach the mofo. Yeah. Why didn't you people she was bring right. that up? Because uh, she was right. Uh, okay. First of all, first of all, and I, she's a, okay. Uh, let me address people, that. Okay, Brady. Brady, why don't you? Oh, Brady, why don't you be quiet? And let me answer your your mofo uh, comment. Yeah. Okay. What What do you think about that? Okay. That's her opinion. Okay. She's fine first of all, 
she believes that the president should be impeached. Committed high crimes okay? and misdemeanors. There yes. were a lot of people that believed Bill Clinton deserved to be impeached yeah. and still do, and I don't have a problem with that either. That is called, Brady, you see, that is called an opinion. Now, mm-hmm. but let's change subjects here, Brady, real quickly. I'm being serious here now, Brady. You seem like a great guy. You're not biased at all. I really want to help you, okay? Sarcasm. I, I'm serious. I think you have an infatuation with Ocasio-Cortez. She's never going to sleep with you. It's never going to happen. She would never go anywhere near you, so how do we get you past this now, okay? Now, maybe Nancy. I gave up sleeping with Latina women 20 years ago. Oh, okay. So don't worry well, about I'll it. tell you what, I'll send you your Ku Klux Klan <laughs> outfit through the mail. Have a very nice day, Brady. I appreciate it. I think we finally figured out the roots of Brady. He, he might be a racist. That you know, might be you possible. You know what was classic about that, though, Brian, is he went on a four sentence description <laughs> wait, of what wait, he thought. Why? Trump should have said, and then, you know, which Trump never why, why, even said. Why is Brady a racist for not liking Latino women? For I was not, making for a joke. For not having Don't a preference. Don't take me seriously. Okay, I was so, making so a if joke. I'm not attracted to one race, am I racist? Absolutely not. Are you sure? No, absolutely not. I was poking the bear at that. I was making fun I was making fun of Brady a little bit because he calls in all the time. It's also one heck of a obsessed. stretch. And if, if things get to that point where if you're not attracted to one race that you're racist, I'm that's not crazy. Tra- I'm not attracted to you. Does that mean I don't like white people? I don't know. 257-5396 is the number to call. 702. Two two five seven five three nine six. Chris is more fair skinned. I'm more attracted to him than you, Jamie. He is kind of tan today, though. Seven zero two two five seven five three. He's got a nice glaze. Okay, let me give out the number two five seven five three nine six is the number to call. Let's go to uh, David. David, what's going on? Hey guys, how you doing tonight? What's up, David? Okay, so first of all, the cop who said whatever about her being shot, he's done. He needs to be fired. That's I hope not so. Acceptable. Yeah, I hope so. And so I, does I, the... You know, I, I'm totally for free speech, but when it comes to threats or that, then, then that has, you have to draw the line there. Uh, Trump needs to dial it back. The things that he said, you know, are not uh, the most eloquently stated, mm-hmm. uh, for sure, to say the least. And at the end of the day, none of this moves the needle. Well, uh, I, I disagree with that. I, I, well, yeah. well, go ahead, Chris. Tell, tell. I disagree I, because ahead. because he is. It, look, when it comes to politics, right? I think we can all agree on this. Politics is about addition, not subtraction, right? And so, what has transpired in the past eight days is not something that is going to add to Donald Trump's support. Now, look, Brian. Well, but he doesn't need to add to it because the bottom line is this: people he doesn't need vote to add on to policy. It? People vote on policy, not personality, in my opinion. This is my opinion. I could be wrong, and I'm not going to yell and scream like the other guys. Sorry. No. If it's boring, <laughs> radio. <laughs> David, you're doing fine. Go ahead. But but in any rate, people vote on policy, not politics. I mean, today, Talib came out and said, well, it shouldn't be $15 an hour. It should be $20 an hour minimum wage. Okay? Yeah. And so to me, the next CNN debate is going to be an auction. Uh, 25, 25, 25, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30 an hour. Yeah. 30, 30, David, 30, I'm with 30, you. 30, David, David. I, I think you definitely have a career in auction. <laughs> David. Listen, uh, and I appreciate the call, by the way. It's always good to hear from you. I'm, I agree with you on that. Okay. I, first of all, $20 minimum wage is absurd. If this is what the Democrats are going to run on, they are going to get destroyed. Okay. That is nuts. I do not agree with it. Now, Bernie Sanders talks about a livable wage. Well, he's right. I mean, $8 an hour, $9 an hour is ridiculous. I think, I think this is another example of Democrats and Republicans needing to come together to come up with a wage that – is a little better than than where it's been at. So I agree. Let's take another call at 257-5396. Let's go to Lamar. Lamar, what's going on? Brian Shapiro. All right. Have a nice day, Lamar. Appreciate that. 257-5396. Let's go to uh, Dustin. I believe Dustin is next on the Vegas Take. Dustin, go. Yeah, what I'm I guess what I'm worried about is all the Muslims running around in this country. Yeah, that would that's a classic comment right there. That's top notch. What I'm worried yeah. about is all the dumb people that call into yeah. radio the, shows that let, are walking let, around let, in this let country. Let me ask you this. What <laughs> what exactly are you worried about? Well, I'm worried about seeing like airplanes flown into towers and people dying because of Omar. Stop watching so many action movies where there's bad outcomes. So this is a joke. Hold on, Dustin. This is a a joke of a phone call. Dustin, you can't possibly be that stupid. You think Omar is related to 9-11? Are you that dumb? No, Omar's like trying to start a jihad. All right. Are you really that stupid, Dustin? Hey, why do you think that, Dustin? Yeah, why do you think that, Dustin, huh? Well, she's uh, terrorism. I think you're starting to you're what, starting a jihad. What, what do you think what, about what, that? What, what does she's uh, terrorism, like, back that up with some substance, <laughs> that please. have anything to do with it, but that's all right. Go ahead. Go or, ahead, dumbass. reasons. Go ahead, dummy. Uh, that wasn't necessary, but one or two reasons. No, it is necessary. When you're a racist, you're a dummy. No, no, she, it's better to be safe than sorry. We don't, we don't want 
airplanes flown in the building. And I'm asking you a question. What does that have to do with Omar? Answer the question. And Dustin, how many times has that happened? She's Muslim. and the So you think because you are Muslim, you are connected to 9-11. Is that what you're saying, yeah. Dustin? Uh, Absolutely. Dustin, I think you can't, this, this you, guy's can't, you can't feasibly make that association. That that would be literally ridiculous. Hey, J.D. and Brian, I'm just going to give you the benefit of the doubt and assume that you're joking with us and you're not actually that ridiculous. Right, well, I'm going to get rid of him because, you know. I just, think that guy's grandmother, J.D. and Brian, was <laughs> the one that talked to John McCain back in 2007 <laughs> during, the, <laughs> during the election process. I think Obama's an Arab. Yes. <laughs> That's uh, some kind of relation to that woman. <laughs> no, ma'am. No, ma'am. I can I easily see it. I could see that, too. I think Obama's an Arab. What's wrong over there, J.D.? J.D., you really tried with that guy. You gave him a chance. I gave you credit. I gave him a solid, solid chance. <laughs> you gave him the just, respect he just, that he, he just, does not deserve. He just kept setting his own foot on fire, he, toe by toe by toe. <laughs> Too, I'm laughing because it's so ridiculous yeah. that there are so many idiots that, out there that think that way. It's so dumb. Well, Brian, Xenophobia. let me give some quick advice to the people out there, either the <laughs> racist or the deplorable people. And by the way, there were deplorable people, not as many as Hillary Clinton thought there was, but there were deplorable people that voted for Trump. Let me give you some advice, okay? If you're going to come on and try to defend or rationalize what Trump said and make it sound like he's right, you're going to get destroyed on the show, okay? You're going to get absolutely annihilated because there is no defense, all right? Even Anthony Scaramucci yesterday, I don't know if you guys saw the quote, Anthony Scaramucci came out and said, don't throw an orange on the ground and try to tell me it's an apple, okay? <laughs> don't do it. By the All way, speaking of, Scaram- speaking of Scaramucci, by the yes. way, the number to call if you want to be a part of the show, 257-5396. Again, 702-257-5396. You know, Scaramucci's buddy, they're friends, Michael yeah. Avenatti. Mm-hmm. So Michael Avenatti is going to be joining us in studio. And I'm thinking to myself, is there a local Republican, somebody that can really give it to Avenatti? And Danny Tarkanian has agreed to come in studio. So that is going to be a lot of fun. Danny Tarkanian, of course, the son, late great, Jerry Tarkanian, staunch Republican and supporter of the president. Him and Avenatti are going to be in studio on Wednesday, and that is going to be electric. I promise you they will both deliver, and Avenatti will be joining us in studio for the entire show on Wednesday, so that is going to be a lot of fun. Again, the number to call if you want to be a part of the show is 257-5396. Another big issue that I wanted to bring up, and yes, it involves the GOP in Illinois. Top GOP officials are condemning a meme recently posted to the Facebook page of the Illinois Republican County Chairman's Association. I'm laughing because it's so ridiculous. That depicted four, the four minority congresswomen as being the jihad squad. That's right. An official Illinois GOP Facebook page. Nobody is claiming that the page was hacked. The jihad squad. And it also went on to say political jihad is their game. If you don't agree with their socialist ideology, you're racist. Now, it has since been taken down from the group's page. It is amazing to me that there are people out there. Imagine what they are saying behind closed doors. If this is the type of thing that they post on Facebook. And I talked about this Louisiana police officer, basically a death threat to Ocasio-Cortez, saying she deserves a round. And what I mean by that is not a round of drinks. No. Okay? This is a police officer that is posting stuff like this. You want to talk about hatred. That's the definition of hatred. And again, I'm not condoning some of the things that Omar has said, and I've also criticized some of the things that Ocasio-Cortez has said. Uh, For example, comparing what is going on to the border to concentration camps. I disagree with that. But with that being said, that doesn't mean they hate America. What would make you think that they do? Because they criticize policy. It's the exact same thing that Donald Trump still does and did on the campaign trail. He talked about policy. Does that mean Donald Trump hates America? Should Donald Trump go back to his country? It makes no sense. Simple put. It makes no sense. Well, the same people like that that are putting up memes and going on social media are probably the same people, Brian and J.D., that for the past week have been trying to make Donald Trump out to be the victim, right? Oh, you're calling him a racist. All you guys do, all you lefties do. And by the way, 
Okay, it's not just Democrats and far left wing people that think what the president tweeted and what that chant was about at that rally was racist. Okay, there are people across all walks of the political spectrum. Now, I know some people are going to call up and say, oh, but only four Republicans, you know, disavowed it in in the uh, in the House vote last week. Well, yeah, that's called politics. Okay, we get it. D.C. is about politics. But there has been a fervor of just disgust and just disheartenedness around the country Mm -hmm. from millions upon millions of Americans on what transpired last week and what the president tweeted and what was chanted at that rally, Mm -hmm. okay? And those of you that are to come out and either try to defend it or, or actually are bold enough to support it, then, yes, you do have issues that you need to deal with, and, yes, there you have racist racist tendencies. It is the Vegas take. Sharp and Shapiro, that's the voice of Chris Wynn, who joins us every Monday. Boy, do we have a lot to get to coming up in the next segment. Uh, of course, we had a big boxing fight over the weekend. Manny Pacquiao surviving 12 rounds. Uh, pretty much controlled the fight from start to finish. We'll get to that at 40 years old. It's very impressive. I was at that fight. Uh, talked to a lot of people. Seem to think there's a big fight between Pacquiao and Mayweather coming up. We'll talk about that also. <laughs> Brooks Kepka, we haven't seen the enemy side of Brooks Kepka. I'm going to decide exactly what that means. He made some really interesting comments Sunday after he walked off the 18th hole at the British Open, and he's actually blaming somebody other than himself for his poor play. So we will get to that. We got Gloria Allred, attorney, joining us coming up in hour number two, representing her client that was sexually assaulted. Uh, by a boxer who lost his boxing license and the California Commission Boxing Commission had a meeting on that. So we will talk about that coming up in our number two with Gloria Allred and also former UNLV head interim coach Todd Simon will be joining us here coming up in just a little bit. So that'll be a lot of fun, a lot of fun as well to meet up with Todd Simon, or at least I should say catch up with him in studio. And a reminder to all of you, this show is moving. We are very happy. We're staying here. Don't worry. We're staying at KDWN. We wouldn't want to be anywhere else. However, we're moving. We're, we're, the show is going to be expanding an extra hour, and we're moving to mornings, 9 a.m. to noon. So that's going to be a lot of fun. That starts August 12th. And our very, very, very close friend, Steve Sanchez, will be taking our place from 6 to 8 p.m. I have heard a rumor that he has an extremely high IQ. We'll, we'll get to that a little bit He has later. a lot of Twitter followers, yeah, too. Yeah, he does. We'll take a quick break. And a lot of money in the bank. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to The Vegas Take. Be back right after this.